it's a pages later you dial you dial right back into just i want to say tough love to yourself which is pretty much what's happening in these pages in this in the blog this is also from uh, 2006 a bit later you know folks will say you have to love yourself just the way you are and it's not what's on the outside that makes you beautiful and i just thought to myself well Hasn't she touched a nerve? Because I just got in trouble for calling out someone doing this exact thing where I pointed out, um, I don't know if you saw this or not, um, the recent fitness magazine where they have an exercise, uh, I want to call her a guru. She's obviously very heavy. I don't want to be uh, harsh um, because I was really not trying to judge her. I was trying to say, may not be the best way to help people in mass towards fitness. Because obviously you need to be talking to your doctor if you're in the neighborhood of 250, 300 pounds or more uh, before you just start jumping into some sort of exercise routine. Because the person on, if you take the person quite literally on the cover of this magazine, they look like they're on the verge of early onset diabetes, heart disease, COPD, everything else. And I'm not to say that her doctor hasn't cleared her and she's not even suffering from any of those things. God help her. But we're living in this culture now where what you wrote about in 20, 2006, sorry, I almost said the wrong year, in 2006, is almost like part of the culture war. It's like, oh, yeah, you're just beautiful. And it's, it's okay. It's okay to love yourself. It's okay. You're, you're 250, 300 pounds. You love yourself. Okay. Well, loving yourself and improving yourself or making changes to yourself, as you said, ultimately realizing that you have God's purpose, those are all completely different things, are they not? Yes. So... I will always say, you know, the girl on the cover of, of that magazine, she's a beloved child of God who is created in God's image. Of course, she's sure. lovable as she is. However, the fatness is a symptom of something that is not a, I, you know, I don't like the word normal because of, you know, we, we all have our variations of how we express our, our physicality, but, um, it's a symptom of something that's off balance. Mm -hmm. Our bodies were not meant to be that heavy. A healthy person, look, we're not all perfectly trim and fit, but somebody who is what they call morbidly obese in, in the medical field, uh, that's a symptom of something underlying that's off. And if we just say, well, you're perfect just the way you are, well, spiritually, I mean, your soul you're a beloved child of God and perfect and lovable in every way. But physically, you can't possibly tell me that that's the healthiest expression of your body. It's not. We're meant to be a, a lot more fit. We're meant to move. We're meant to get into the sun. We're meant to eat far fewer processed foods. Mm -hmm. uh, eating, you know, we eat recreationally. In the book, I talk about I had a severe binge eating disorder. So I wasn't even enjoying the food. It was just my drug of choice to numb myself. That's not healthy. What was the imbalance? Depression, anxiety, everything that needed to be healed under that. Nobody maintains a 250 to 300 pound frame and is at ease with themselves. Hmm. I have to challenge that thinking. I used to be, oh, fat acceptance, fat positivity. Well, that you deserve love and respect and you love and respect yourself and you don't have to be thin to deserve love and respect of course right but love yourself enough to be honest with yourself am i expressing my best health by remaining this heavy and not looking at my habits and what might need to be healthier you mentioned your prayer previously so this kind of may be the same answer but if it's not uh, elaborate a little bit on what what changed then when was it that you said all right i am i am pretty on the inside like i am beautiful i know i have this physical uh situation that i'm in that i put myself in i'm maybe working on a path to make improvements there but when you when do you start to realize and actually accept when is it when did you get to that point because this is still very early in the process for you it seems like there's still quite a long journey that we're on so it's like when did you get to that point where you you know you kind of said yeah, yeah, I, I get that now. I get what I get the differences. Uh, not until recently. Wow. Praise God, though. Wow. Well, that's what I started to do a lot more. So 
in March of 2020, the big turning point for the world, I said, oh my God, evil is real. There is no longer denying that the enemy, you can call him the persecutor, Satan, I don't know what you want to call this evil force that exists is real and it's coming after us. And I ran like a screaming child into the arms of God crying, I'm so sorry. Why did I think I could do this life without you? Mm-hmm. And uh, I started doing um, the Bible in a year. I don't know if you've heard it. I'm, I'm Roman Catholic. So, you know, we, we have our uh, Father Mike Schmidt does the most popular podcast. Supposedly it's the most popular. Uh, it's the Bible in a year podcast. So every day immersed in the word every day praying. I got the hallow app. Sorry, I'm advertising a thing, but it's an app. You just pray. If it helps one person like you, then we did that. We did our job because that's really all that matters in the end of the day. I definitely am into, uh, you know, once you get that right, like, God, I'm sorry. I'm trying to do it on myself. And, and folks, let me give you permission. Um, I guarantee Lisa will not, or at least admit this to you're going to fall back to like, just cause she said that that happened in March, 2020. It doesn't mean that uh, July went well. It doesn't mean there wasn't a bad day in November. It didn't mean that there wasn't uh, these three weeks that happened, uh, you know, two months ago or what it's, that's okay. That's the roller coaster of life. God doesn't leave you. You just have to know that you lean back in and you start praying differently. You change, you know, be transparent. I always tell people, no one's, no one's fooling God, by the way. I love people who like try to keep secrets and don't want to talk about it and whatever. I'm like, there is no denial to him. He already knows. He's waiting for it. It's like your kids. Let's always go back to the, the best analogy of God, of course, is the parent-child relationship. And we can understand that and not take it as some sort of condescending thing. We know what our kids are doing, especially my kids. My kids are older. You know, my wife and I were just discussing, you know, they're, they're, they have families, you know, a couple of, you know, some are married, some are doing this. And, you, and it's like, you kind of go through these evaluations and you start to think to yourself, oh, I can see this one's doing that. We can talk to them about that. We can't talk to them about this. They, they, re, they repel from that conversation. God's sitting there and he kind of has this whole big thing just standing there waiting. And uh, I know for you, you know, that's, that's part of it, right? You, you acknowledge that there's this date and this moment where it, it clicks. So what's that journey been like in the last uh, year then? Like what just everything changes when you start opening your arms that wide. Uh, confronting fear. I think somebody said it's over 300 times in, in the Bible, Old and New Testament combined, uh, that says fear not, do not fear. But that's all I was doing, was fearing. <laughs> so leaning on God, trusting that God had a plan for humanity, for, for his creation, for this earth, and for me. Mm-hmm. And if I'm created in God's image, how, how dare I call myself anything but lovely and yeah. lovable? that is so true i'm not sure about the 300 thing i i've heard pastors say it's like once a day i can tell you as someone who spent a, a minute or two in some of those pages uh oh what happened hello i'm here oh my screen it was weird oh there we go okay it just went off my screen i was like whoa that was weird uh yeah one a day there's so many references there's like one for each day or something like that so it's pretty close to that we have derivatives of fear not definitely adds up quick so